Hey guys, so first off, I want to thank you all for the incredible support for the last few months. You guys are insane. And I also want to touch on some things here before we get into the cast. Obviously, the building blocks are still being laid for the podcast, but I'm excited for the future of both shows. This one starts out rough, but I swear it gets better. We've got some things being made for the show, and eventually these will be live, so you guys can ask questions and be more involved with the podcast as they go along. Anyways, have a listen, and let me know what you guys think. Also, feel free to comment on topics you'd like for us to cover. New episodes for the podcast will be released on Mondays, and we're currently shooting for every other week. Also, if you'd like to find my co-host and I, be sure to click on the links in the description below. Anyways, guys, I'm going to let you go to the podcast. I hope that you enjoy, and I'll see you very soon. What's going on, guys? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Dude I Rage. I'm here with my co-host for Delete the Podcast. Welcome to the show. Justin, Netsy, how we doing this morning, guys? Good morning, good morning. Doing I'm, good? I'm doing good this, right. this, this evening. Yeah, I'm doing good. All right. I'm super excited to be here, guys. Uh, obviously, this is our first episode of the podcast we've been talking about on the stream for weeks. Um, we've so lovingly named it Delete the Vodcast. Justin, round of applause for that guy. Thank you so much for that because we didn't have a name for it. That was me. What? Was it you? Was it you? Okay, that's it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember. It's been a few weeks. I got to give credit where credit's due. Okay. But anyway, um, we've come together and uh, we've knocked some heads and we've got some really good chemistry here. So we're going to have some good conversation. Um, That's the objective of the show here. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, Today we're going to be talking about passion. What are you passionate about? What drives you to be successful? So, Boys, passion. What do we have to say? What drives you? What makes you move forward through everything? I don't know. I, so, I feel like I've got a couple of things I'm passionate about. Like, school is a big one. Um, but I've recently discovered, like, a passion for photography. So, mm-hmm. I just, like, school is always kind of something that was important to me. I guess more so for, like, finding a job. But, like... Was school think, was school for you always an objective for you or because your family kind of instilled that in you as I, you were a kid? I think it was always something for me. Like, I knew it was important. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but cars, like, I, I, I've always been passionate about cars. And, like, that got me into engineering. So mm-hmm. it was just, like, I always just pushed myself further and further. I wanted to be, like, a mechanic at first. And I was like, no, like, I can't start. So stop there. That, that's interesting to me because I know what you're doing now. So why don't you tell everybody what you're doing now with your photography, actually? What are you currently pursuing? So I do a lot of uh, race photography. It's, like, I don't, uh, people might not have heard about it, but it's uh, called drifting. So, like, drive sideways, like. I don't know, like Tokyo Spotify. Drift, right? Everyone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's it's more popular than you that. think you, than you think it is. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, that's um, great. That's good, man. That's fun. And I and I've seen your work. I've seen your Instagram. This guy will deny it. We're gonna. I don't know. Well, I don't know if I'll attach <laughs> the stuff. I don't know if I'll attach the stuff. That's up to him. You, you can, you can. Okay, so we're gonna attach the stuff to this podcast. But um, the guy has fantastic work. We'll put that Instagram uh, in the description of the video here, so you guys can see it. <laughs> um, but this guy takes fantastic pictures of racing and drifting, and it's it's. It's awesome, and he's yeah, he's very humble about it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a big following, so we'll definitely link that stuff yeah. <laughs> either on the video somewhere, somewhere over here, and then in the description, we'll put it somewhere. Um, but I net- feel like what's quite interesting. I just realized I completely cut off as of me. No, I was gonna, uh, I was going to ask you anyway. So tell me about your passion. But go ahead, go ahead, say what you're going to say. I'll, I'll 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 ask the default. So what I think what I think is quite interesting about the kind of route you've taken in regards to your passion is how you've you've started it like point a so you've like okay i like school i like this i like that i like the other and then you've managed to find a way to express that passion plus meet multiple criteria so obviously mm-hmm. engineering is i think for you and you wanted to do mechanics and you obviously have that kind of brain and at the same time you've also found a creative approach to also fulfill the other passion that you have mm-hmm. if that makes sense i think like it's kind of an underlying passion mm. like i just like to learn so I I the first thing I was learning was school, just like schoolwork. And I was like, all right, schoolwork can't be everything. So I wanted to find something else and I, I had a camera and like when I first got it I didn't really use it all too much and I put it down for like a couple of years. And then I needed like an outlet, I guess, from school. So I just picked it up again and then I just kinda rolled with it and 
mm-hmm. kind of developed into what it is now. And look at you now. <laughs> look at you now. Yeah, they don't know yet, but they will. They will. <laughs> They'll know this guy. They'll know this guy. So, 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 Netsy, dude, tell us, like, where did the passion for music come from, man? Like, you're very Ooh. musically inclined. Like, tell us about it, man. What drives you? I mean, that that's an interesting one. Um, so a bit of kind of, I think, backstory would be the correct term is a lot of my family are quite very musical, very creative people. Uh, so like my mum plays piano, plays guitar, sings. My uncle is a drummer. My other uncle is a bassist. You know, throughout my family, a lot, yeah, wow. a lot of mu- a lot of musical. <laughs> yeah. um, like my granddad especially played guitar for like 35 years plus, And that was kind of, I think, where I got it from. Um, so growing up, it was always something I was exposed to. I was always kind of, um, you know, people talk about like, oh, when I was younger, there always used to be this music playing in the background or this music playing in the background. Um, But when I was young, I didn't really have much of an interest. I was just kind of like, well, you know, music's cool, I guess. Like I like listening to music, but that's kind of where it ended. Like I I think I got my first guitar when I was six, maybe, Mm -hmm. but it was just something that was kind of there, you know? Right. It wasn't. I think at that point you're too young to like, yeah well not yeah, necessarily kind of, man not necessarily dude they're children you can see it on true, youtube that true, just pick up guitars and they're just well, killing like, it well, at <laughs> that point, it's either there or it's not like yeah 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 i think for some people it's it obviously people's brains develop in certain ways and they have callings to certain things and they you know they see a guitar or a drum kit and they're like i want to hit things and then that's what <laughs> they do and that's that becomes their job mm-hmm. um whereas for me i went through my passion for music from being a listener first okay that makes sense Mm -hmm. so musically it would be like oh i like this kind of music oh now i like this kind of music so then i was oh well this is a really good song i really like i'll learn it right and that was kind of how i got in the door of being a musician as it were um and then through like years of playing and really being passionate about it that then led to me doing the degree that i'm doing in music um but then from that, I think I kind of clicked as to what really drives that for me. And I think I know I know that you guys would be on a similar wavelength is if I create something and I'm putting like the the utmost of my energy and creativity into hours it. And hours, of work. hours and hours yeah. of just like, mm, that's not quite right. Mm-hmm. Or ooh, that needs a little bit of a change. To be able to then sit back after like six, eight, ten hours and see or hear something which is like i'd listen to that or i'd watch that mm-hmm. for me yeah, that's like, like you've made, that. you've made yeah, it yeah, man that's... that that see like and that's that also ties into a lot of uh I, I talk about this a lot on stream and you guys would be like all right jay you're beating a dead horse but honestly like being successful is a state of mind in my eyes mm-hmm. and you could be like i said you could be flipping burgers at mcdonald's if you're fucking happy doing it, man, guess what? You've made it. You're successful. Like someone's got to do every job. There's a person for every job in this world, right? And if somebody starts from the bottom, you know, at a restaurant and works their way up to like manager and they're happy, bravo, man. Like, and that's, that's it. Just, that's just it. Like perfecting your craft. Like it's taken me years to do what I'm doing, like, and to finally see some sort of like success, but like my vision wasn't there. Like my, I had a passion for it always, but I didn't know really what way to correct it, to go straight, you know, to move forward. Um, mm-hmm. and it's taken me that long to get to this point. Um, but to, to, you know, about music, uh, some people don't have access to that. Actually. I yeah. never had access to, to drums, yeah. guitars, mm-hmm. pianos, nothing. My, see when I, when I was growing up, my dad really, really wanted me to be a police officer or a soldier. So I got toy guns mm-hmm. when I was a kid. I got camos, BDUs and stuff when I was a kid. I didn't get drums and stuff i actually didn't have access to music uh until about 11th grade 10th 10th grade 10th grade i took electronic music which was keyboard and i learned how to play piano and i love piano i could still play piano um but i didn't have access to that stuff growing up so it's interesting one i think that's one thing without sounding like an old timer is that the younger generations have so much access to so many things oh my god man because like like take streaming as an example right like Back in the day, content creation, I'm talking like 2010 onwards, you know, you've got, you had to, okay, if you want to record a commentary on Call of Duty, okay, you need a DVR, you need a microphone, you need all this stuff. And it's like, there was so much that went into it. Nowadays, you press a button and you're live. So to have that at your fingertips. It's, it's incredible. Thing. It's a huge thing. Yeah. 
but then what it's also done and it's very similar with music now is like i've seen a lot of people who are very young and you know they might have garage band on an ipad or whatever but That's there's what been... like you could have so many apps on the yeah. ipad or anything yeah, yeah. like you there's a lot of albums out on like spotify that were produced on an ipad like, yeah some of them you'd never even know no like, and that's the that's the thing is i feel like now the amount of energy or the amount of money or you know time invested into getting a finished product is so much shorter now than what it used to be in in a lot of ways i mean that's technology so technology's done yeah, that for us yeah. yeah absolutely which it has a lot of p benefits a lot of positives but at the same time i feel like it is also changed the way things work a lot so for example uh say way back yonder like you know 70s 80s 90s if you wanted to create an album you've got to go to a studio you've mm -hmm. got to do everything manual you need to have a guy for that you need to have a guy for this you know everything now like i've done it where i've sat in my room for a week and made an album or made an ep by myself because oh i don't have a drummer well i've got a plugin for that you know right so I no. think that's also taken a lot of the um, collaboration out of a lot of creative things. At least, at least in my experience, that is. It's it seems like it, to to me for some reason like these days, uh, people are just a lot less inclined to do things in time. People want it now, like yeah, yeah, quick, like and it just they want to see the end result. They want to see it way too fast. They don't want to work for it. Uh, not that they don't want to work for it, but like they're thinking about the end goal before they even think about the hardships that you have to do, you know, mm -hmm. with everything. Um, yeah. And obviously, we'll, we'll we'll move on from the music because we could fucking talk about that all day. Oh, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll start going down yeah. a rabbit hole. But uh, but anyway, so so let's talk about a defining moment. Let's talk about what pushes you. What what was it for you? Were were either of you uh, at a point where? you were at a crossroads and something pushed you over the edge to pursue something or was it just natural for the both of you I, and Nancy, i know you said that you music is kind of in your genes you just have a musical genes you you grew up with that so it's not it's really been just basically abc for you right like just kind of no problem Hy hypothetically yeah like when i explain it over a are you are you of... are you passionate about anything else? Is there anything else that you were thinking about doing before you were like okay let's do music actually cuz i actually yeah. really like music yeah, so prior to me deciding what I was doing in college or what I was doing in university, um, I did, I, well, we'll call it graphic design, um, art and stuff, and, you know, video editing, Photoshop, the whole lot. I did that from the age of maybe 10, 11, because mm -hmm. I, I was homeschooled for about five years. So in that time, I was like, oh, what do I like? And I've always been like a creative person, whether it be visually, music-wise. So there was these two kind of roads of like, right, I like graphic design, I like video editing. I like that kind of side of things. I like music too. So my first year of college, I took graphic design. Uh, well, I took media. Um, and as much as I loved it, it was like, I'm not being pushed. And for me, that's where I really see the reward of my work like we were just talking about you know you want the reward quickly whereas for me i'm the kind of person who is motivated by the grind and will work for hours and hours and hours and, refining it and, refining it. So then, and that's that's what i like about you that's what i've always liked about you because we've talked like we just talked about yeah. it just a minute ago people don't want to work they don't want to they don't have the drive they just want to see the success without doing the work um, and it's yeah. it's a rare thing it's actually a rare commodity to have these days like somebody who wants to work and like well, that's, you know, that's the thing. is when I when I did media, I was very much like top of class because by the I was what sixteen, so I'd already had sure like we'll say six years, five six years experience in doing that. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, that was their introduction to that. So I very much got the treatment of here's today's tasks, go sit over there, do that, then do what you want. And for me, if I'm not being pushed and pushed and pushed and like kept at the end of my limit to grow i lose interest so mm. i then i had music going on this whole time in the background too and i never really thought of myself as like a good musician i never really thought it was oh you know i could do this mm. and then 
I found myself in a group of friends who were all musicians and just clicked with them because a musician is a very certain type of person. So for me, that was kind of like, right, I have one thing I've been doing for years and another thing I've been doing for years. Which one am I being pushed in the most? Which one is going to give me the most satisfaction and from that kind of growth personally? Um, which then led to me doing what I'm doing now. Okay, so music was a challenge to you. Photoshop or like yeah. graphic design was really easy. And actually, like graphic design and artist work uh, is huge, uh, especially mm. on Twitch. I mean, dude, these guys, I mean, give them credit where it's due because, you know, you need good artwork on channels yeah. and like emotes and everything. And like, it's expensive. They're they're making mm -hmm. some good money. I mean, so good on them, you know, all the credit to them. Um, that's a side note. But um, so, Justin, was there anything that ever like pushed you or is it was just was simply just... There Boredom. I, I could I could definitely think of like a defining moment. So like I kind of said how um like school was like I needed an outlet for school, and like I had a lot of a lot of stuff going on, and it was just kind of like I don't want to say like a, a sad part in life, but it was just like very there was like a lot of burdens and stuff, and like I just needed something to put all that energy into. So I was like I had like an absence of like where I didn't use my camera for a while. I was like you know what like. Let me try it out again. So it kind of fed into wanting to learn mm -hmm. that whole thing. And I just started, like, I used to shoot on auto, like, everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to learn how to shoot, like, full manual and actually learn this camera, like, properly. Like, everything about it. So it really stepped it up. And it put the pressure on to, like, make the best work I could. And, like being able to look back at some of the work that I made and be like, wow, that like, it wasn't that great, but it was like a step, I guess. So yeah, like, it was just being able to put that energy into something better. And it kind of like, I don't know, like, it kept the momentum going, I guess. Um, so I just needed something to like put my energy into. Uh, and I think it really, it challenged me. So, like, I, I had a lot of pictures and stuff that I took, and I never really released. Um, and being able to put that out, that's, like, when I made my Instagram was around that time. Mm -hmm. And to be able to put that out and have other people see that and kind of give me feedback, it just put the pressure on even more. I guess I, like, make my best work in pressure. So, like, just having something else, that's, like, I guess what, like, ignited that passion. Right. Like, that kind of and that that drive was something. there right yeah. and then and like once yeah, you yeah. and that and you know with with finding it's funny because like when i started streaming like i did it i was obviously pursuing my degree in criminal justice you guys for those of you who don't know i have a two-year degree in criminal justice which is nothing it doesn't doesn't matter right people are looking for bachelors when you're getting a job um especially in that field but i started mm -hmm. streaming on the side um to keep my mind busy i love video games i've always loved video games mm -hmm. who doesn't right um but I, I started doing that on the side and uh, I was just looking like for something like I, I as I started doing it, my my time became more and more consumed with creating because I was so mm. interested in it. And mm. yeah, like that's kind of what happened with me too. every day when I was in class, I would be hearing the, the professor. But in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, I really can't wait to get home and see what I can do to improve my stream. Mm -hmm you yeah. know yeah, yeah. and then eventually it snowballed into you know like i said um people coming in like before i even knew you justin like in the first two three years like hey when are you going to come back and stream again like it's mm -hmm. been four days i've been looking forward to this for four days and mm -hmm. one person turned into two people and turned into five people and then turned into 10 and for me dude that 10 people that 20 people yeah. my yeah, yeah. god man like i bro like I can't even begin to tell you how much I look forward to stream when I had 10 people in there. That's 10 whole living beings yeah. in there. Like yeah. just incredible like time out of their day to right. And it, it, when you start at zero and like that, like I said, I, for my first, cause it took me, it took me three years to get my degree. Cause I took time breaks and summers and stuff like that. Um, but in the beginning though, like the first year I had nobody. I started at zero and I stayed at zero. Like I had mm -hmm. nothing. Um, yeah. And, you know, as I got better and I spent more time and I found myself like when I was at school, I'd be in class, like I'd be in forensics 
and I, I really, you really have to pay attention in forensics. And I'd be on my phone and my tablet at school searching how to get better at streaming. And I'd be watching yeah. YouTube. And then, and then I like, it came to the point, like I realized I'm like, I really, really like to, to converse with people and have good conversations. And I really, really like to play games and entertain people. Why aren't I doing broadcasting? And of course, yeah. like by the time I came to the realization that my passion wasn't in police work anymore. I was done with my degree. <laughs> like I was done before I knew it. Like, and I'm like, shit. Like, and I, and at the tail end of my, of my uh, diploma, like I just, I started to fall off. Like my grades, like I started to get C's and B's and something like, and D's. And like, I had to do extra things to, to lift. Like I had to do extracurricular activities because the mm. professors did like me so that I could get the C and the B in the yeah, class yeah. so I could, you know, graduate. Um, so I, it, you know, I, I think the defining moment for me uh, was realizing that I just didn't enjoy um, going to school. Pushed me to be a creator. I think actually mm. it was that thing because you know, and and we we've not really talked about this. Maybe maybe we have just a little bit, but um, I feel like most people are pounded in the head with go to school, go to school, mm. go to college. Yeah, yeah. You know, where as I'm I, in college and I'm even an advocate, like, you don't see the point, right? It, like, I mean, there, there could be a point. point. It depends what you're doing. Right. There's a lot of things that you can do on your own. Like, like exactly. Yeah, so like that you can learn yeah. on your own. So like medical school, right? Like, obviously you need a diploma for that. Like you need to know what you're doing, how to save lives. And it's so important. Right. But like mm -hmm. for guys like us who create like, dude, I learned half the things I know from YouTube and yeah, google I, I learned everything i know from like <laughs> everything like, like I, I discovered some things on my own from like messing around with stuff but like yeah. i learned everything that i know literally from a search bar and that is yeah. that is a statement that stands so true and i think it'll evolve as time goes on like we're all i mean we're dude we're about to be in the next decade 2020 mm -hmm. hi what's going on um how you doing, how you doing? <laughs> um so yeah, it's it's crazy. So so my next question for like and we can come and feel free guys, like feel free to like interject with each other. Like we don't have mm -hmm. to go like this is our first time, guys. This is our first <laughs> time doing this. So understand we're like we we have our chemistry, but we have to learn to like not interview each other so much, but like cut each other yeah, off. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, um so for as, as a person, like for me, I the advice that I'd give a person that hasn't discovered a passion yet is to get creative and do things differently. Mm -hmm. Don't go by the norm. So what would you guys say? Because it obviously took us all different routes. It took us trying things yeah. that we thought we liked to discover what we really loved. Mm -hmm. What would you yeah. tell somebody who doesn't have a passion or doesn't know what they want to do? Ooh. What I would you my, say? My, my first piece of advice is like for me, a lot of the things I'm passionate about just kind of presented themselves in my lives, in, not in my lives, in my life um so you know if like we'll use school as, as an example like i'm i'm doing a music degree but it's not it's not easy i still enjoy it but at the same time like i'm the same with as you are jr you know i'll be sitting in a lesson and in my lessons it's very much like there's a there's a tutor over there with a guitar i need to be doing exactly what he's doing but i'm sat there like so i wonder what happens if i do this on stream or I wonder what happens if I create this kind of overlay. God, so my, dude. my, my yeah. brain's like not in it. Mm. And as I have a terrible, you know, attention span. So I'm just, I just, let me, let bit. me, let me interject here and just point out to all of you interject. pursuing uh, a degree. I in no way am telling you not to, to pursue a degree. Uh, for those of you that are listening or watching, because that's what I was kind of getting at. Uh, I, I, mm. Degrees Don't are just important. Drop it. Don't yeah, just drop are, it. Absolutely. Like yeah. school, school has made me schooling was a big part of my life. Like I don't use anything with my degree at all, but I have that to fall back on. If I decide yeah. that creative work isn't my, my thing anymore. Like I like to be a jack of all trades. So like, I want to do mm. multiple things and know multiple things. And like, I love creating. I love sitting down and editing a YouTube video. And like, I love podcasts. Like I love this. I can't wait to do more of these. Right. Um, but I also love law. And I also love, I'm also very passionate about animals. Like I have a huge passion with animals, which is obviously something that I want to pursue down the line. Um, yeah. I worked at an animal hospital for almost two years. It's, it's one of the hardest jobs, one of the most heart wrenching jobs. Um, shout out to the medical professionals with people and animals. Um, you guys are amazing people. 
Manda, if you're listening, shout out to you. Um, but yeah, anyway, so anyway, I, anyway, I'm sorry. I cut you off, but anyway, that's, that's, that's so, so, so stay in school. If you, if you are passionate yeah. about it, it's absolutely a yeah. good thing. Mm-hmm. Kudos to you for sure. Yeah. Um, advice I would give to someone who hasn't, was the question who hasn't found that passion yet? Yeah, yeah. So uh, if yeah, okay, okay. Or just any advice in general, like starting any advice out, in like, general. So okay. to find your passion. I think well, I one... think we can we can break the mold. I think we'll all agree yeah. here that you have to push your boundaries. Mm-hmm. For sure, for like, sure. Like get yeah, out yeah. of your comfort zone and that, and just fucking go for stuff, right? Like big thing yeah. for me. Like I I was very uh very reserved, I guess, and like I never had a way to, I guess, express myself really and. When I was first taking pictures, I never really released them. So when mm-hmm. having the Instagram to do that, like, I knew it was a step that I wouldn't really like at first. Um, yeah. But it was something I had to do. And, like, just putting yourself out there and getting that exposure. It's It might not be good exposure at times. Like, you, you might get a lot of criticism for your work or, like, whatever you're doing, whatever you're passionate about. But, oh, man. We just yeah. talked about that before <laughs> yeah. we went yeah. live. Anyway. But that's how you get better is like I always think you have to start out bad. Like oh, you for might sure. not yeah. you might not be the greatest at whatever you do, but to to be able to look back and be like, you know, I improved upon this or like just to see the improvement, that means that you're making improvements. So Yeah. And that, I think that's, that's also super important. I think it's something to keep in mind as well. All, everything that we do, whether that be professionally, whether that be, you know, socially, casually, like streaming, school, everything. All the things that we do are very much in the eyes of the viewer, if that makes sense. And I know something for me that I find out really hard because I'm a massive perfectionist in everything I do. So, for example, I could be streaming. I can relate to that. <laughs> and I'm like, I do this too. is going really well. I mm-hmm. love this. And that could be, you know, I've got a bunch of friends in chat and they're like, oh, you know, this is going really cool. This is like if I'm doing some different like music streams. Never done them before. That was a whole endeavor of itself. But one person comes in one person and they're like by the way this and like the creative side of me is like screaming and it's like oh he's so right and it won't go away but at the (laughs) same time it took that when i started for people to be like by the way this is what even you jr you came into my stream and were like try this resolution try doing this try doing that and that for me it was like yep that's cool we'll do that and it's just an extra step up so i think if you're trying to find your passion, put yourself in a position of un- being uncomfortable, people... right? Yeah, yeah let yeah. people look You've at you. Be in your, in yeah, your it's a lot about zone. being yeah. uncomfortable. Absolutely, you're gonna absolutely. Be you're going to fail a hundred <laughs> times more, but you're also going to succeed. And when you do, it's going to feel a hundred times better because you yeah. failed so many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I, I think we can all relate. Like, it's taken me years of failure to to make it. Like, I'm not a perfect person, dude. I I've had so many problems and i've made so many creative errors to the point where i am now um where people are finally starting to see like okay like yeah okay this guy knows what he's doing and, and the only reason i know what i'm i don't really know what i'm doing well let me say i i'm starting I to understand really what doing. but that's another big thing about it is i don't think anyone really knows what they're doing no Everyone's absolutely not no it. no and success comes with with fucking winging it man like yeah. i can say dude yeah. i've winged so many things like even the podcast man we're winging it look at us we're dude. winging it yeah, it's we're just winging it. how it's going but it's good it but that's great like yeah. and it, yeah. you know and it so for for those of you that are listening if you're if you're out there and you're not sure what you want to do but you're 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 at a level where you're like man i really want to do this but i don't know if i should because it's really like weird or just, just do it you just got gotta do it you just yeah, have like, to whether whether you're bad at it or not just try it out and just even if it. it's not working for like the first while like don't give up. You just gotta, yeah. Yes, no, that, absolutely. That's the thing is not giving up. Yeah, not I also giving think up. with the way the internet is at the minute as well, everything and we we touched on this briefly is everything is numbers related. Oh, if absolutely. If you're passionate about something, don't take numbers into consideration absolutely. when you're starting. Because for me, and, and very similar to you, Jr. You know, you if if I'm like streaming is where it's at. This is what I want to do. I'm really passionate about it. Don't look at the viewer numbers because oh, what you're doing not. might not be bad. And the numbers don't dictate what you're doing. So in the same way that default you do photography, you know, mm-hmm. you could take a photo, you know, of an amazing I, photo. I, I could like, post it sick. on Instagram and I could get X amount of likes on it or whatever. And then but the that doesn't dictate put, the quality it'll be of what significantly you're lower. Yeah. I got very, very caught up with that in like the beginning. Mm-hmm. And 
it's something that you have to put in like the back of your mind like yeah it the number kind of means something but it doesn't at the same time you gotta focus like, on the craft man focus yeah, yeah. on the craft yeah. and everything else will fall suit you you have to you have to put out what you what what you like so like a big thing what what i do is i'll have like a film friday kind of thing and a lot of times like it doesn't get the numbers that a lot of the other pixels will get but at the same time, like I don't care because it's just that's what I like. I, I like to yeah. do that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and and again, let me take it let me take it back to what he Netsy just said, and I really like this. Numbers don't define what you're doing. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you have and again, uh I, I st me is a perfect this is a perfect example. I started at zero for over a year. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew who I was. I had nobody. Nobody watched my stream at all. Zero. And it uh, what i was doing like like i have clips from my channel and people are like dude that's great like why wasn't yeah. i watching you mm. three four years ago and i'm like i, I don't have an uh -huh. answer for you i was nobody yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i still am nobody like i'm working towards getting to that you know that level of success that i drive for but um the drive uh for success is at each person's own level you know mm. and and we touched on this before maybe i said it before but i in my opinion like being successful is something that you deem it to be Again, yeah. if you're working in a fast food joint and you're super happy doing it, you started flipping burgers and now you're a manager. Like you're, yeah. and if you're happy, you're successful. In my eyes, that's the way I view it. Um, so, and, and and again, we'll we'll go back to drive. Um, I would say for for those of you out there that haven't found something that you're passionate about, I would say break the mold, test it and yeah. uh, uh, test your boundaries and just break your limits and, and be embarrassed and, and work hard and like fail. Um, Cause the more that you do that, eventually you're gonna, it's, it's a process of elimination. You know, it's taken people years to get where they are. It's taken all of us years to get where we are to finally mm -hmm. decide that this is what we wanna do. Like we're really, really passionate about it. And that may even change. It's okay for your passion to change. You don't have to pursue one thing for the rest of your life. You oh, have believe, one life. Believe me, and it can change. Like yeah. it can change in an, in an instant. Like I spent mm -hmm. my entire life. That's something I've been realizing recently. Yeah, absolutely. So like you could be into what, I don't know. You could be, tomorrow you could decide that you wanna pursue electronics and build computers for for a career and that's a super mm -hmm. lucrative career in technology the way it is to stay um you could just that could be your passion or you could be a you could go work at a factory and make vanilla folders and that could be your and you could love doing it and go to work yeah. clock out and yeah. be the best at it man but that if that's your passion you're happy dude mm -hmm. guess what you've made it man you're successful like yeah so it, it doesn't have to the don't, buck doesn't don't have to stop people define your success absolutely oh, for sure, for sure. With that. so okay it's e i mean it's easy to do so now that we're 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 kind of we're 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 at a point where we're talking about drives. So mm -hmm. if we're if you're driven to the point where you're finally starting to see success, this is a this is a this is going to be kind of a a yikes. But at the same time, it's not. But it's important to understand and talk about what happens if you're super successful and people start throwing shitloads of money at you. What? Ooh. What do you do? How do you handle that? Because everyone de and, and people will tell you that once you get money, people change. And I definitely believe that. For sure. For sure. But I also I, it, I also don't believe that people will change or money will change people entirely. I don't feel like no. I feel like having a lot of money can also change people to do a lot of good. Yeah, I think it I, also de it depends from your I think it depends on like your origin story, as it were, you know. Mm -hmm. So like for me, when I grew up. It wasn't exactly like the most stable of households. It wasn't, you know, there was not a whole lot of security in my life. So for me, if someone was like, hey, you're a millionaire, I'd be like, cool, house. And mm -hmm. it, I think it depends on what your, your priorities are as to the effect it has on you. If you have money and then get given more money, that money isn't experience. That money isn't holidays. That money isn't treating yourself. That money is a number. Whereas if you give someone with nothing a lot, yeah, they might change but it also depends on what they do with it that defines them. So for example, if naturally you're a giving person, you know, I haven't got loads of money, but if I can help people out, I'll help people out. Mm -hmm. If someone giving gives me 10 million, would. the giving in me doesn't yeah. go away. So, so both of you are both college students and yeah. I've been there and I know what this is like. I, and I still know what it's like. I still have no money. <laughs> like I have no fucking mm -hmm. money, but um, as a college student, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. 
Every yeah. dollar goes to books. Books are mm-hmm. freaking expensive in America. Hundreds of dollars. Hun- it cost like at one point I paid six hundred and fifty dollars for one book mm-hmm. in my time at college, which is absolutely absurd. I don't know what the prices for books are over there, but so as 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 college students, uh, both of you guys, say. Mm-hmm. Oh God, what's what's a good example here? So Netsy, so say someone comes into your creative stream, yeah. and you're doing a riff or you're doing some sort of like tune, and mm-hmm. some big producer comes in, he's lurking, he's seen you create this, and then yeah. he DMs you like, "Bro, I want to sign you. I want to write a check and pay you for that. Can we have it? I want it." And yeah. say it's a fat number, like <laughs> yeah, like big a, boy a big yeah. number. Like they're gonna use it for like a big artist somewhere like Lady Gaga or something, she's going to use it. What do you do with that sort of money? Do you change, do you stay in school? Or do you let that money kind of curve your path to a different way of producing your creative or like in what's nurturing your creative would, would side? Would you do it more yeah. for the money or would you do it more for the experience? Because that experience okay. could also yeah. lead you to many other things. So, so my viewpoint on that, as well, there's, there's two perspectives. There's realistic perspective and then there's my perspective. Um, like you said, JR, college student, not a whole lot of money. So if someone offers me a fat check, I'm, I'm not thinking like, right, let's go to the Bahamas, boys. Let's go. I'm <laughs> like, right, let's clear debts. Let's, you know, create myself a foundation. But also, like you said, Default, the experience, especially in a creative field like that, is that could be worth so much more than any amount of money. Also, the mm-hmm. music industry works in a really weird way. So if this producer is chilling and is like, hey, we want to buy that off you, that you can either go fat check or you can go royalties. Now royalties is where you make those big boy bucks because say like, look at it this way. Someone buys a CD, my music's on that CD. I earn a cut of what's spent on that CD, right? Now, if you think about what, what's a, any classic song, right? Like you hear it on a song like that reminds me of this time or you know any metallic song, whatever mm-hmm. that comes on the radio randomly. They're mm-hmm. earning money for every single track that's played. So mm-hmm. it depends if you want to go down the route of stability now or ongoing outcome. Like you can mm-hmm. have passive time. income and that's what you want to get to be able to do the creative stuff. Because you can have a big check of money, but that's a constantly dwindling number. Absolutely. And, and you don't know right. who this guy knows either. Right? Exactly. Yeah. That's something mm-hmm. I've realized recently is like, yeah, the people you meet could lead you to mm. their friends wanting you to do work for them and Let, their yeah. friends wanting you to do work for them and yeah so everything kind of like, snowballs right so yeah. let's because i i i really fucking hate talking about money so let's move yeah, away it, from money because yeah, money doesn't consume any of us right yeah. I, it doesn't consume me i i absolutely like i i could, it's a necessity I could, money. I could but i could care yeah, less yeah, exactly. like it's a necessity. like if i I'm use it all right and i'm in that like exactly if, I, yeah. if i'm eating yeah, yeah. good and I'm in a house that's not leaking or something like that's good enough for me. Exactly. Um, yeah. So some I, let's move away from money. I was going to ask you something and I totally just forgot what it was. <laughs> forgot what it was. Well, well, actually, I have a question. OK. Actually. All right. About um, what you just touched on. So. In regards to the people, you know. That's what I was going to say. OK, go ahead. This is something that's like kind of been on my mind mm-hmm. lately uh, in a lot of ways. But like we'll take streaming as an example. Obviously, it's something we're all quite familiar with. Is sure. it's drilled into your mind constantly, especially you know if I YouTube how to start streaming or how to be a better streamer right now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's going to be network, 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 network. Absolutely. And although I might agree with that, there's networking for personal gain, and there's networking to create personal relationships with people. Correct. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, yeah. So I'm with you. So I'm I'm there with yeah. you. So like the people that I've had around me for years are the people that mm-hmm. I want to take with me to whatever level of success that I reach, if I reach any at all. Which is why mm-hmm. Justin's here. I I met Justin. How long is it? Almost four years. It's been yeah. it's been a long time. So like Justin used to be a streamer. He used to stream Daisy, which is what I do. Um, obviously you guys know that. But I went to his channel and I was watching, and my God, man, like. He had nobody watching, and he had this <laughs> this killer stream. Like he did his own graphics, his own overlays, and everything was great. But his audio was so fucked. It was it was so that. bad. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm sitting here watching. They're sitting outside this town with sniper rifles, two blaze rifles, both him and his friend. 
and they're trying to get this squad. And I'm like, I remember it. And I'm watching. I'm like, man, this is great content. But he sounds like shit. Like he sounds like he's got a Play-Doh can for a mic. Like I'm like, hey man, like you should do this. Like change it because it's I can't hear. And like he tapped out and he sat there. Process of elimination. We fixed it together. And we just got to, to pick in each other's brain. And like you know, he asked me, but I was somebody that sat at zero viewers too. So like I, I was, I yeah. had like two people. He was like, oh, yeah, you're a streamer, too? I'm like, yeah, I'm a streamer. Like, come by sometime. Like, I was just being friendly, right? And we've built this relationship. Um, and, you know, God, man, look, at you've you've grown. You've progressed. You're in college now. Like, you have this big following on social media. Like, you're being humble about it. Stop. Don't don't be humble about it. Like, it's it's insane. Like, it's incredible, man. Like, and I look back at where I met you and where you are now. And, it, dude, it makes me proud. Like, I know this guy. And look at him look at him he's killing him so like he's killing it like you're killing it and it's it's great to see growth and like there's a lot of beauty in that you know and there's a lot of beauty in the hardships and uh, a lot of and, like the failures like we talked about you know i think it's it's if you take a step back and look at everything that you've done to this point and where you are now and like look at it as like a, a timeline like just look across mm -hmm. and just see everything that you've done to get you to this point and it's my God, man, it's one of the most beautiful you things kinda, ever you, you can you see. You owe it to the people that, that yeah. helped you get to that point. Absolutely. Yeah, like, like, you can't be afraid to uh, put yourself out there and give people that little like hint of advice or yeah absolutely like, like you gotta build to hurt their feelings with that advice either you gotta build mm. each other up you yeah. might have to break somebody down but in the end you know it's gonna like Nessie was saying like people will come in and nitpick and he's like okay shit he's right let's do that right people will will perceive how you give them advice whether they're asking for it or not in a certain light but in the end of the day like if you don't like it or not it doesn't matter if that person's trying to help you you're going to yeah. build character off that and try to change things. You're going to look at it even if you don't want to change it. You're going to think about it. Well, this person yeah. didn't like it, and I wonder if anybody else didn't like it. And then you're going to start to tweak things. And you might even find something else that you might not have thought of before, mm -hmm. yeah. and you might change yeah, it to sure. that, and you might love it after that. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's super important to, to like, the relationships that I've built over the years, like um, – and and where they are now and like how everything like zoe Zoe's a perfect example of that like zoe and i met three or four years ago um it's somebody i want to build up she wants to come back she wants to take streaming seriously i want to build her up i want to help her mm -hmm. um so you know if when she's around let's fucking make it happen like and yeah. uh and that goes for everybody like and i think it's super important and i, I don't think money would ever change that either i if, if it's me mm -hmm. dude it you know me <laughs> if i had all the money in the world dude everybody's eaten that's just the way i was raised <laughs> man that's and that's yeah. you know and hopefully one day i can do that um i have a lot of ambitions to like i want i want to be playing with summit one day chugging. you know and i i, I just want to push along and we're, we're gonna go for it um full send as full send so so if you <laughs> so if you guys both become successful and we are in our own lights and, and successful but if if you both become successful at what point do you start to change your scenery do you do it at all do you travel do you go elsewhere do you move to where the industry is booming or do you stay where you're at in your humble areas now we'll say like my humble little apartment where i live do i stay here and continue to create here or do i do a lot of creators do and like move to la where it's real popular like what do you do I, do you travel i i've uh at, at my track there's been a lot of they call it grassroots so it's just like grassroots drifting it's like where people you start from not knowing even how to drive stick shift car they'll teach you and you'll work your way up to be some of the best of the best of the track and then you could take that to the next level and go pro so in my track there's a lot of guys who will actually come back and drive and teach a lot of the the new guys like how like the inner workings of their car that they never even thought were a thing same thing with media like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who shoot professional media that will come back and give you tips on how you can improve and i i think i kind of model my own uh way of doing things from that just because i think it's super important to kind of give back like a lot of these guys they didn't have to come back they didn't have to mm -hmm. kind of teach you where where they went wrong but they did like they could be doing tons of other things that could be expanding their growth but they decided to come back and teach and i think that's like what's super important to me is being able to do that.
So you're going to, so, well, and for, what's great about photography is, man, you could go all over the world and take yeah, professional yeah, exactly. photos, man. And people are going to mm -hmm. seek you out. Like, Hey, I want, yeah. like, I'm not talking about like, you know, wedding photographers, like, unless you got like a, a celebrity, like someone's getting married and like, dude, I want Justin. I happen. want him, dude. And they, they could, that could happen. Like we're going to mm -hmm. Dubai. We're going to fucking skydive off this building and you're going to jump with us and take a photo. Like that's nuts. But dude, stuff like that happens, man. Yeah, yeah. And know. that's, and if you're jumping off a building to take a photo, you better damn well be right. You're paying me. <laughs> you're booking my flight. Cause if I'm dead, at least I didn't have to pay for it for me to fly to die. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, no man, like, um, you could, uh, yeah, no. So and, like photography can get you there. And, um, I think it's great. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for you to make a ton of money mm -hmm. doing that. And um, I, I, I like what you said, you know, coming back to, to teach people. Um, that's fantastic. And I, I relate to that too. Like I want to come mm -hmm. back and, you know, if I get to a certain level of success, I'm like, I'm always going to remember the names that supported me over the years or even just popped in, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. I definitely want to help them. Um, and obviously the same could go for you, Netsy. Like you could, sell this track like we talked about or make all this money or start working for this big production company making music you could even make music for movies and stuff you know and that's i mean are, a lot of money in that are you gonna are you gonna move like to to a different area like where from where you are now there are hmm. so many areas around the world that are like super heavily musically yeah. inclined like and la is a perfect example dude everything goes hmm. on there production companies you name it movie comp everything um, so if you if you had the funding and you're starting to see some success, are you going to stay where you are or are you going to move? What do you what would you do? I think the thing the thing about me is I'm not really like I'm not really one of those clout guys, you know. I'm not really like I'm going to buy a mansion in the Hollywood Hills. And that's not like, what I mean. That's not what I mean. Like, but no, I mean, I like you could get a one bedroom studio in yeah, L.A. Exactly. It's still very expensive because California is yeah. expensive in general, especially yeah. L.A. But I think it's one of the most expensive places to live. You're going to be – you're States. and think about it like this too. Your opportunities would could potentially open up more because they know that you're living in an area where you're easily reached. You could go to meetings and yeah. you could be available versus just an email or a FaceTime or a phone call. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think if, if it was a case of like, right, okay, you have set budget, get yourself into a position where you can establish a career, I think – Obviously, like like you said, you can travel the world. You can still live in the same place. You're playing right away from any job you want. Um, with music, it's kind of the same, but it's very much a collaboration thing. It's very important. So I think for me, I'm more of a, a like a family guy. If that makes sense. Like I wouldn't. I'm not really a big house kind of guy. I'm like I like my space. I like my little area to do my things and if i gotta go and do this and go there i'd rather take a plane journey and come back and be quiet because mm -hmm. i grew up in the countryside and like don't get me wrong i love living in a massive city but i live on the outskirts of a massive city because i can't handle the constant and arguably not really arguably but actually factually most some people not some well I, i'd say it's like 50 we'll just we're not going to put percentages out there but some people versus others will argue that being in a space where you've got nothing like writers for mm. example they'll go yeah. they'll get away your creative side blossoms and not having for any sure. distraction sure. no sounds no cars no trains yeah. and i relate to that too heavily like you guys already know like <laughs> i got the damn trains that pass by here every day <laughs> like it, where i live is not where i want to live but it's where i can afford currently and that's where i'm at um, mm -hmm. and with no, with the less distractions I have, the more I, my juices are flowing. You really, yep. oh yeah. And... Oh yeah. I'm in my yeah, zone. Some people that like, I need to be in a, a fast paced environment. And like, don't get me wrong. Where I used to live was slow. And I mean, slow, slow, like isolated. Um, and there's, I think there's a balance, but some people, you know, that's why people move to LA. That's why people move to places like that is because it's just constant grind, constant go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And people do become a product of their environment. And if you're the type of person who blossoms from that and being in that scenario, then yeah, that would be... There's no, like, there's no direct formula for it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, sure. it's a case of you've got to put yourself in a position where you yourself perform at your best as often as possible, as opposed to like okay, if I'm in this isolated environment in this very specific kind of scenario, that's when you do your work. I mean, it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. It also depends what you're passionate about as well. 
Yeah, and some people will feed off the noise. Like, I, there's movies yeah. where people are like, you know, especially music. Yeah, you know, they'll mm. have to be listening to something else to be like, okay, I'm going to write it this way. And, you know, they're vibing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's now that you've said that, I, I see the last thing on the itinerary here. We're just going to move away from that for another podcast, I think. Um, the last part, the very last part before the platforms. Um, but let's talk yeah. about your, you have passion. Let's talk about someone or something that's inspired you to keep moving on or inspired you through a process that you're currently on. That's really good, I think, and that's really uh, connected to what we've been talking about up to this point. Yeah. Um, I'll start, um, and then I, I think about it for a minute. Let it boil in your head. But something that's that's really some- I already know. I already know. <laughs> what I what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? Let's no, see. no, I already know for me. Okay, 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 already, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. right. Um, but obviously, I've always looked up to my my father's worth ethic. Uh, ethic. Um, at Jesus Christ. My father's worth <laughs> ethics. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't speak. Um, and my mother is, is a very hard worker too. But my dad, my dad is. I mean, he started working in the, in cornfields when he was 13 years old. Um, he came over right. to, from Puerto Rico with my my abuela, my grandmother. Rest in peace. She, uh, rest in peace. She she passed away. Um, and he's always like blood, sweat, and tears in everything that he's mm-hmm. done. And that's where like my hard work ethic comes from is my dad. Um, since I started streaming. The person that I've looked to up to the most, I, I, I've always, when I first started streaming, I started watching a guy named Snafty, um, which he no longer streams. Um, but uh, his creative love was, it was just something to behold. Um, and Potato, obviously, I look up to a lot. That's one of the first guys I started, you know, watching uh, streaming. And he's, he's not changed at all. He's not skipped a beat. He's still the same guy. And he is a sight to see and watch that guy. That guy's incredible. But the biggest one who I constantly draw inspiration from is Summit. And I've talked about this a lot. Summit has not changed. That Summit doesn't surprise me. It doesn't bit. surprise you at all. <laughs> he has not changed at all. He started at, you know, zero and worked his way up. He streamed for seven or eight years now, maybe longer. I'm not sure. But um, that's somebody like if I'm feeling down or I'm not feeling creative enough, I'll turn everything off and I'll sit back and I'll watch Summit stream. And I'll just watch mm-hmm. it for hours and his genuine love and enjoyment. Like you can see it on his face when he's playing, mm-hmm. like when he's not punching monitors, he's fucking, he's fantastic, <laughs> you know? Um, okay. So let's move away from me. So what inspires you to push through if you don't, if you lose the drive or the passion? I, I think so for me, a lot of it really comes from a lot of the other media guys at my track that I go to. Um, just whenever I have questions or like if I'm just not feeling it because it happens it happens to everyone it's just like a completely normal thing like I'll just tell them like hey like I'm not feeling it today and like a lot of times they'll be like yo you should try like a couple different things or like they'll just give me little tips on how to get through that and I think when I feel the momentum slowing down I usually go to them kind of get me out of it and it 99% of the time works yeah, and I could draw so much inspiration from their work, uh, just seeing what they produce. Cause I'd say there's about like fifteen or so regulars at the track, and they all have their own way of doing things. And yeah. to be able to see like, wow, like that guy did that picture really well. Like he, the way he composed it, the way he edited it. Like, I want to try to do something that's similar to that. Like, put my own twist on it. And I think it's a collective way of like it just it's one full circle like other people will see what i do they'll see what someone else does and we all just kind of keep growing and feeding off of each other until we get to like where we want to be i don't think we ever actually get where we want to be but so you're surrounded by greatness at all times basically i'd like to say so (laughs) yeah Yeah. And, and that's okay like that's it's it's great to to build off somebody um, there's so much positivity and, and let me let me interject it, it let me say something real quick it's great to build off somebody by inspiration but it is not okay to copy somebody else's yeah, creation yeah. that's why yeah. big that's big big thing like, you have to put yeah. your own twist on things exactly yeah. it's to a point where and in, in this in this industry and in this industry that is a plague that is a plague <laughs> and, and you know that i've experienced it and there are other people that have uh, around me uh, we won't mention names or anything because it's inappropriate to do so. But, again, be inspired. Don't yeah. take somebody else's yeah. creation. Anyway, okay, so Nessie, let's hear it, man. What do you got? 
I think the thing for me, there's not really. I mean, there are obviously there are a couple of standout people in in my life who kind of motivate me to like get out of the whole like oh I'm not really feeling it. Um, so that's like my grandma, for example. She is an absolute workaholic. She's like 75 and acts like she's 30 and is still very much a mum to all of her kids and is always there for me, will just call me and drop everything and be like, so how's your day go? And for me, someone who lives an incredibly fast-paced life and a million miles an hour, just the simple act of that prioritizing someone mm-hmm. in like, when you when she has enough stuff going on, you know, do you know what I mean? But that for me has always been something that I really aspire to. And she's one of the people who I spoke to about doing my degree and she was the first person to be like, do it she's a musician too she's mm-hmm. sung for like 50 years as a actual career well 45 mm-hmm. but um that's a family long time wise, that's yeah. a long time that's a yeah, lot of experience a long-ass time. You're yeah. very wise woman i look up to my grandma a lot um but in regards to kind of you know ins and outs of creativity and ins and outs of uh, daily life i think what you touched on is is really important having a really solid circle of people is that's helped me so much so like for example i've taken a bit of a break off what i'm doing streaming wise is just real life stuff going on and like to come back and then like see jr absolutely smashing it to me is like that's so sick like he's worked yeah, yeah. so hard for that and he's put the work in he's he's doing what he's get doing and he's getting it done so mm-hmm. for me that's really cool to see that um it's hard and- to find that too yeah exactly because a, a lot of times and i've experienced this as well because especially in the music industry it's very cutthroat but to be able to have people around you who don't hate on you for your success, but support your success. Build, build you up you instead of break you down. Your... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. That for me has been the the snap out of it, whether it be one of my close friends, like, hey, you haven't streamed in like a couple of weeks. Are you all good? Like, we miss you. That is enough for me to be like, I'm there. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think, and let me, since you said it, um, not all uh, the industry the creative interest industry and everything else like and everything else in life can be very cutthroat people are out to get you they're out to take what you have what you've worked for without doing anything for it excuse me um i think it's important as creators as people just trying to get through your lives that we don't focus on those things so much you just have to cut them out get them away shed them off of you whatever you need to do and just kind of progress through the rhythm, the motions of, of building and learning and failing and, and doing it again mm-hmm. and, and building yourself up. Um, getting a passion for something takes time. It takes a lot of work. I think we can all agree on that. And it doesn't happen overnight all the time. For some people, it does. For some people, it can happen overnight success. It's like born talent. It's sometimes, yeah. It's but, but it doesn't work like that for everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah, some people not, have to work for years to get, to get where they're at. And... Uh, I think uh, we can we can come away from this conversation um, and take the information that we have here and have a little bit more respect for people that have worked <laughs> for for years in industries. Doesn't matter if it's streaming or not. Um, yeah. And just and see like the beauty in again uh, the process. The beauty in the process mm-hmm. is there, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's a wonderful thing to go back and see somebody who started at A and now they're at Z and they're ready to graduate to to numbers now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just the way of putting it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think uh, gentlemen, this has been a fantastic conversation. I've awesome. uh, enjoyed your company, <laughs> and uh, I thank you guys for joining me. Um, so thank you all. after the podcast, where can the people find you? um plug 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 plug. i'm on (laughs) instagram uh at jay brisbois uh b-r-i-s-e-b-w-a-h you could probably link it somewhere i don't know we're gonna link it we're gonna link it that's usually where i'm at all the time so okay constantly updating it all right that's Uh, it for me youtube twitch instagrams n3tsy uh the only one that isn't that is twitter all right it's underscore at the end but uh yeah i'm not on twitter (laughs) so. <laughs> all right all right you beautiful people thank you so much for joining us today this has been delete the vodcast you guys already know me i am dude i rage you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash dude i rage or twitter.com forward slash dude i rage i will see you next time thank you for watching or listening have a wonderful rest of your day peace out later